This is Africa. Rich in traditions and rituals, community and farming, of stories and worship, and cultural traditions which stretch back thousands of years. Is their story worth remembering? It's November, and a group of community leaders from across Africa are meeting in Botswana. The group of 12 all share a connection with indigenous communities. Over the next seven days, they will be living in a homestead which recreates traditional life here in southern Africa. I attended the Botswana workshop in the year 2005. When I came here, to me, it appeared so much unique. It was a very special workshop. It was a workshop which was being held in a very traditional setting, done in a very traditional way. And uh, there was no right or wrong. So whatever you say, whatever any other person says is respected. At, at the end of the day, you are able to come up with practical solutions towards the issues that you want to raise. So I'm involved in so many groups in my country, youth groups. Uh, it's kind of my hobby. Even the workshop setting is quite different. It's not like the conferences that we are used to attending where you, you are arranged in rows and columns. You have a speaker there coming with presentations, PowerPoint presentations. Here everything is quite relaxed and then you are, you are able even to speak out your mind quite clearly. Actually, this has been my first travel outside my country. Together, we try to see the way forward. The Nguama Lodge was established by two traditional healers, Colin and Neil Campbell. The aim was to provide a space for reflection on global issues from the perspective of traditional or indigenous African life. Find out more knowledge about our ancestral wisdom, their ways of life in terms of natural resources management. I, I've been in development work for quite some time and I remember when I went, came out of school, I was an agriculturist, I was trained in agriculture. And I came back into development work very excited, thinking I could change the whole farming system. And, and I was taught modernization that well, we had to use improved seeds. We have to use um, fertilizers, we have to use pesticides. So we went out in all the village to, trying to teach them how they should discard what they were doing and use this um, uh, new technology as development. But after 20 years, I went back to some of the villages. What I found was that either they were west off or maybe just as where they were before I left. And so I began to think that no, there must be something wrong. I think the development we've been pushing is not a right one. Food production is not the only problem facing indigenous people. In most rural communities, televisions and mobile phones are more familiar to children than their own culture. And beneath the surface, the changes are far more deep-seated. Unfortunately, development efforts over the last 50 years have themselves exacerbated and accelerated this erosion of culture and the loss of African identity. These communities have their own knowledge. They have lived with it for so many years, millennia. 
and they have been able to live harmoniously with their environment. So sometimes we find ourselves, especially those people who are from development organizations, just getting to these communities and coming up with technologies and knowledge from nowhere and then going to impose it to them and these end up wrecking the whole community, a community which was very cohesive, a community which was also very strong. The, the Botswana process is about bringing people who have deep connection with existing uh, indigenous communities around the world, well, particularly in Africa at this stage, uh, bringing them back into uh, a, a setting where we teach the understandings that were practiced in pre-industrial Southern Africa, which for the most part are universal to most of the traditions in, in Africa. We effectively try to recreate as far as possible many of the methods that would have been used pre-industrially to uh, initiate people in the law of nature. So that includes, in a way, going into nature uh, in a completely vulnerable way and availing yourself of what nature has to offer. Before Western education spread through Africa, knowledge was passed down the generations in the form of hands-on learning. From playing instruments to hunting and dancing, knowledge was shared through experience as much as it was through the spoken word. Learning through sheer proximity to nature transcends logical explanation and community living and shared concepts of prosperity shaped the moral fabric of culture in pre-industrial Africa. The Botswana process explores some of these elements to stimulate ideas about community, nature and identity and the connection between all three. Particularly in Africa, where these values still play out. In the African community, people see themselves living in three worlds at the same time. They live in a natural world, they live in a, in, a, in a social world, and they live in a spiritual world. So within the three of them is what you would call their uh, well-being. And well-being for me, described by some community, it doesn't mean having so much money. It means sometimes you'll be recognized in the community. It means that if you have a problem, the whole community would want to come to your aid. It means that you are living in a community where your water is not polluted, where your soil is fertile all the time. That is what they describe as development, which they call well-being. And so for us, in our development work, that, that guides our uh, conception of development. Traditional cultures in Africa and across the world share many ideologies and common ground, but all are threatened with extinction. Right now, the Earth's cultural diversity is dying just as quickly as its biodiversity. Keeping the stories, the moral fabric, and the knowledge alive is vital for the identity of this rapidly changing continent. Although I've always thought that African culture, African wisdom, African way of thinking is important, but I've never been able to look at it in a very systematic way. Here, for once, I've seen it put together in a very systematic way, which pe other people, apart from the indigenous people, could also experience. For me, that is very powerful. I've been trying to find out ways in which we can make our own African culture, make other people, non-Africans, able to experience and appreciate it. And for me, that's what this program has done. It also gave me the zeal to go back to my community, to interact with my relatives, to interact with my elders, to learn more about who I am. Because I realized before then I really did not understand who I am, where I had come from. The education system I had gone through had actually changed me a lot. It had actually trained me. 
to move out of my community, to go and look for a job somewhere else. But what I realized is that I have a purpose within the community that I, ha I come from. I need to go and connect with my people, with my ancestors, to go and also listen to the elders, understand myself fully, where do I come from, who am I? I talk to a lot of development workers about the need to go back to our indigenous knowledge base, go back to our institutions. And the question they ask is how? And I think I've got a how in a way from here. And I want to translate this into Ghana to see how people can, you know, experience these institutions, experience this knowledge and be able to, you know, internalize that and use it in their everyday work and development.